think it stopped. Maybe. The neighbor's house. Back there. Lots and lots of noise. There's a fun angle. Oh, look at all the flowers in the background. That looks nice, and I was just thinking about how I need to clean all of that up, but it, it that looks so nice. This week's vlog has been a mess, to say the least. The construction started over at my neighbor's house, which is great. I'm happy for them, but it is loud. Very loud. A lot of machinery, lots of beeping. I, just, I haven't been able to film. Trying, but it hasn't been working out. And here's, okay, all right, lens cap, come on now. <laughs> I did start the video off thinking I can make this work, I can put it together, and I, I tried. I really tried, but all I have are just lots and lots of little random clips that aren't adding up to anything that I think would be enjoyable to watch or follow. I started off saying, hey, I need to clean this area up, and I started cleaning the area up. And then I remembered, oh, I need to go to the nursery. So I went to the nursery, got an exciting plant at the nursery, brought those things home. There was noise, ended up filming a video for Wednesday that already would have come out with the plants I picked up from that nursery. And then I got an email that night from the nursery saying that my winter orders were ready to pick up. So I went, picked those up, and now there are more plants to show. Still a lot to do out here. And then I went by Home Depot to get dirt and mulch and ended up picking up a few arbs. It's a mess. So uh, what I'm going to do, I think, is I'll just cut into the part where I go to the nursery and then once that clip's over, I'm just going to cut back to what I'm doing right now. It's going to be nonsensical, but I just, I don't know what else to do. The stoplight. Clayton and Lindbergh always takes an eternity. Been out to Sugar Creek. Been there before in the videos. They have a tree that I shouldn't buy, but I really, really really want to buy and I just I don't I'm possibly making a bad decision here they likely won't have it though if they do then you'll see it because I'll probably buy it it's a cool tree then only gets 20 to 30 feet tall I can find space for that right and I need cotton burr compost they have really good compost there and I just kind of need to poke around see some shrubs they have a big shrub department and I thought I'd bring everybody along because I pretty much always do depending on how busy it is there may or may not be a lot of footage uh, we'll find out there are tons of tropicals there and they have a pretty good like nice size tree and shrub department look at all that japanese honeysuckle look at that isn't that that's so sad it's taken over destroying things what was i talking about we're gonna go and look at some plants i think it'll be fun i am rushing around because the forecast is calling for rain pretty much every day for the next week so don't know how much yard work will actually be happening so I figured if I'm going to be at a nursery then I should definitely bring y'all along if the forecast is nice this week then uh, gonna be getting some cleanup done on the patio try and get it looking nice again and uh, hopefully get some planting done I have a few planters I'd like to get started on so hope hopefully we'll be able to make that happen we have a whole week I'm starting this vlog eight days earlier than normal so plenty of time to spread things out and work with the weather assuming the weather is going to behave itself that person's mailbox was a pony keg did you see it, it their mailbox it, it, it was a keg that was creative and before anybody starts yelling at me not looking at the camera just holding it don't even know if anything's gonna be in focus and i know my windshield's dirty but that's just the nature of spring when it doesn't rain it's falling and gunk everywhere oh hey what's up garden friends Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Just, you know, all the stuff I just said, that's what's happening. I have an order that needs to be picked up here too, but I haven't been notified about it being ready yet, so I'll probably be coming back. Ooh, look at all that. So nice. Passion flower, one of the reds. No shortage of caladiums. Tons of those. Oh, acacias. Nice looking begonias. Double Delight Primrose. That's beautiful. Yeah. Green Tower Boxwoods. Talked about these a few times. A very fast growing columnar boxwood. Really cold hardy, nine feet tall, one to two feet wide. Nice looking plants. I've been thinking about these for my backyard. I have to really think about it though because you see that. Mm -hmm. They're really big, so that's you know, not a horrible price, it's just I would need two, so I really need to love what I'm getting for that kind of money. And I feel like I could probably get something more exciting than Boxwoods for that 
that price, right? Still very early in the season. Plenty of time to think about those things. Ooh, I'm looking for these perennial sunflowers. Helianthus, they get 42 to 48 inches. These are little, but they're pretty vigorous. I think I'd like these up on the hill behind the apple trees that I haven't planted yet, but that's one of the reasons I'm here, is to get some compost so I can get those planted up. Look at this rose. Look at it. Look at it. Isn't that just stunning? It glows. That's a beautiful flower on this. It has dark contrasting foliage, bright cheerful color, apricot, yellow, pink, full sun, yeah, rose stuff, five feet high. Oh man, I love that. There's some more of them back there. Look, can you see them? They really stand out. Mm-hmm, yep, look at that. Ever seen a cherry beard tongue before? I haven't. Summer and autumn. Oh, I bet the hummingbirds would love, love, love this one. I just came here for compost in a tree and I'm leaving with all kinds of other... You know what, though? You can't go wrong with perennials. Always gotta get more perennials. Very blue. Forget-me-nots. People love the blue. Thought I'd show them. I'm not getting any. I have some beautiful bachelor's button here, too. Love that color. Love that. Yoder hibiscus. What it says? Yoder. Y-O-D-E-R. Those are stunning. I don't like the red metal. That's, that's the thing. I don't like red and purple centers on the hibiscus. Unless it's a Rose of Sharon, which these are not. But they are beautiful. Was that fine? Hopefully. These are different plants. I went back, picked up an order of plants, so that's why there's more things here on the table. We'll get to those in a minute. So, after the nursery, y'all saw the video, the last video prior to this one. Those are what I got while I was there, and I did get the beloved tree that I've been very excited about, the Fort McNair chestnut. Talk about that some more later on in the video. The next thing that happened was I went to repair my sprinkler lines. One of them got ripped up a couple years ago, and long story short, I got it fixed. So now everything on this side of the garden up against the house finally has irrigation again. Then some impatience got, and then some impatience were planted. There's a construction crew just pulled up to my other neighbor's house. So now the one neighbor's putting in a pool, the people to the side of me, it looks like a landscaping crew. Yep, definitely a landscaping crew. And then the neighbors that are over here, they're ripping out their retaining wall. Gotta love summer projects. That's, that's fun. I don't care outside of filming videos. I think it's fun. Projects are fun. But the audio situation has been a problem, so I should stay on point while it's quiet enough to do so. I planted some impatience. Not super exciting. I'll show them to you. I'm gonna zoom way in. Ooh, yay, impatience. On each side of the thing. Got the, oh, hey, hibiscus. Y'all are looking nice. I don't mind that zoom. What about this one? How's that one looking? That's not bad. There's an orchid in front of it. It's still a good sh shot. I got distracted. What were we talking about? There are more plants here to talk about. That's because my winter orders, which I think I mentioned this, those, I got an email about those the next day that they're ready to pick up. So I picked those up. Sort of fun stuff here. We can go over that and then I would like to get to work doing some things. Mostly, I got the arbs. Really nice, great big, huge arbs from Home Depot. Good price. Unbelievably heavy. I think they're planted in cement. I need to get those off the patio because when they get watered, it's just mud that washes everywhere. So I want to get those off the patio and the apple trees. So my objective was to get this area over here cleared up, which I made a lot of progress at. It is looking a lot better, but I just, I need to get the things that are going to go over there. I need to just put them over there so that they'll be off the patio. Because there are plants that need to come outside and I can't bring them out until I make some room for them. And there's still things sitting around that need to be potted up underneath the palm trees that haven't gotten here yet. So, oh yeah, that was randomly 93 degrees on Sunday. Wasn't expecting that. Neither were the plants. Fried some things, but <laughs> they'll be all right. So drastic to go from being in the 60s to just boom, 90s. Too much. So that, that's what I would like to work on, but it's going to have to be very brief because weather. I don't know how long things are going to hold up. I'm going to talk about the plants quickly while it's quiet enough outside. Here's what I have here. This is a uh, uh, cross vine. Bignonia, an orange vine, very pretty vine. There is an oregano here, which I usually just grow from seed, but I was like, hey, they have them for sale, so 
I'll order one of those too. One of the Kirigamis. They have really fun, nice foliage on them. They get a little bit bigger, especially when temperature is cool. I also ordered four Thai giant elephant ears, and this is... That's what I got. That's a whole conversation to be had. The Thai giants, the true Leucocasia gigantea Thai giant. You're not likely to get those in a bulb. Maybe the Colocasia gigantea, Colocasia esculente, Ta Elescodella, sure. But the Thai giants, it's not likely because they take a couple of years to form a corm. They've been in production long enough now that getting bulbs for them I don't think would be unheard of. I just doubt that this is it because anytime I've had a tie, if you've grown a tie and you've ever dug one up, that's more of a tuber like you would have on an alocasia like, or a corm. It's just a great big like potato-y football shaped thing. It's not this. I offered to refund them when I talked to them about that and I said no it's okay I would actually like to plant them and see what grows because I could be wrong too maybe they're like I said enough of them in production now that you're able to get bulbs out of them seems unlikely but maybe I I don't think so but maybe Leucocasia gigantea is sure maybe but the Leucocasia gigantea Thai giant I, nah, I don't think so fun plants and I'm happy to have them I picked up three of these, which I'm so happy about. These are rainbows and hostas. Look at the variegation on those. Every single leaf you get something totally different. They're a nice kind of chartreuse-y, limey green, a hint of yellow. That part I'm not so crazy about. Y'all know I'm not that into yellow variegation. They're fun and they're colorful, so that's why I grabbed three of those to stick into the shade. Also have an Onothera here. This is a Siski U. There's the tag. It's a primrose. They spread prolifically and bloom prolifically. They are a sturdy plant that I think will go nicely in the dump garden to fill in areas up there. That's the garden I'm putting in up there on the hill. I would call it the dump garden just because it's where I dump plants that don't fit the rest of the landscaping, but they're plants that I would like to grow. This is one of my favorites. I had these when I was a kid in my parents' garden, and they took over, which my mom wasn't too thrilled about, but, you know, plant tags have changed a lot. I don't think anybody knew that they were going to do that back then, and uh, they eventually got rid of them because, well, they took over. Now I have some of my own to plant and allow to take over in the areas that I want them to. Next, Sarah Elizabeth Clematis. These are not for me, but I might end up keeping one. It's big pink, Ruffy edged petals, large burgundy tipped anthers, a very pretty flower blooms from the new stem, producing flowers from top to bottom of the clematis. Pruning type three. I don't remember what that means, but I'll Google it. it has to do with the time of year that you prune them. There's another one of those rainbows, end or edge, end or edge, which one? End, hostas. And then it's a couple of Ming treasure iris. These, these are a fun iris. I actually ordered a, I one or two of these last year from Plant Delights and the package never showed up. It shipped, but never got it. So I'm happy to have a couple of them now. This is an iris that gets really big. I think four and a half to five feet tall when you count in the flowers on them. It has a purple flower on it, not quite as big and abundant as on some of the ones that have been bred to have really large showy flowers, but they have a profusion of them. And you know, it's an iris. You can go part shade, full sun. It's just a sturdy plant that'll be around for a very long time. They form nice big clumps. I have one of those for me and one for someone else. And then I have, where, where's there something else? I'm forgetting something. Blue jangles. I got some blue jangles. It did that startle you turbo. When I said blue jangles, his head popped up. He's like, oh, what? Huh? What's going on? They're the Let's Dance series, blue jangles, hydrangeas. So I've talked about the uh, macrophyllas I have growing up on the hill, the dump garden. And yeah, they only bloom on old wood, and the, the winters have been so unpredictable that they're dying down to the ground. So I'm not getting a ton of flowers out of them. The blue jangles is a rub. <laughs> Just gonna keep going. It's a reblooming big leaf hydrangea. Don't know how they managed to pull that off, but they did. Here's the tag: reblooming hydrangea offers months of vibrantly colorful flowers. Compact plant. Blooms blue in acidic soils and pink in alkaline soils. I usually have to add a little bit of aluminum sulfate or just some kind of, you know, soil adjuster to get nice, nice blues out of the hydrangeas. Then just a little bit above seven in some areas. Sun to part shade, the warmer your climate and more humid your climate specifically. More shade to give it, so afternoon shade is what I aim for with these here in St. Louis. It's a five to nine, rebloomer, one to two feet, tall and wide, so it just stays 
nice and short, but they're supposed to just be covered in flowers where they get going. There's a better picture of them in here, wasn't there? Yeah. Blue jangles. Isn't that beautiful? I can't wait to get these in the ground and watch them grow. I wish they got a little bit bigger. That's okay. I'll take it. I think it's nice to have one of the mop head, one of the big ball shaped flower types of hydrangeas, you know, a big leaf hydrangea that should be more of a reliable bloomer should we have really unpredictable winters, which is what we've been dealing with here for the last several years. These have been selling out very quickly. That's why I did the pre-order on them so I wouldn't have to scramble around and try and find them. I wanted five, but I feel like that's a little bit greedy. Three is fine. I need to see how they do and how they grow before making a decision about getting more of them anyways. What you doing? What you doing, baby? Kind of bored. Is it because I'm not giving you enough attention? You can get your ball if you want. Go on, go get it. You have to think about it? That's fine. I'm not, you don't want to. No pressure. Okay, and then the next thing, the skip orals. I went by another nursery. I went to six nurseries this week. Didn't buy things from all of them, but I've been trying to find skip orals for that hedge down there, which I can't film because there are people in the neighbor's yard right behind them. But I found some nice big ones, some really, really big ones. They should do the trick. I have my hand up to cover the people that are down there. The skip oral hedge. It's driving me crazy. So hopefully in the next couple weeks, I'll get moving on that. Don't think there's anything else over here. I'm not gonna, every time I buy a plant, I'm not going to show it off, but I wanted to make sure to show off what I got from Sugar Creek because it's a nice local nursery. I want people to see what they can get there. There's things from all over the place over here. The dahlias are for someone else. Okay, all right, we're good now. So what I'm going to do from this point on is fix this area up and just cut back because the noise is starting again, I'm sure. You can hear it. I don't know. We'll talk some more after that. My main thing is I got to get these giant arbs off the patio and those apple trees and get this all looking better. Okay, it immediately started to drizzle when I stopped recording, which I'm not that mad about. I can film in the rain as long as I use a different camera. That's okay. It probably means less noise from up there. So the fountain. I never set the fountain back up because, well, there are actually a couple reasons. I would like to rebuild it so that that pot, that blue pot, that's the part the water spills out of, I'd like for that to be up higher. So I need to get some bricks and as much as I go to the hardware store, I just keep forgetting to get them. And the, those midge flies, buffalo gnats, whatever you want to call them, they're these tiny little flies that just bite the heck out of you. They leave these painful, itchy welts on mostly the face and neck and they're a problem until like early to mid-June and the water seems to attract them. So I'm not in a rush to set that back up just yet, but I would like to like get all the leaves and things moved out of here and get the basin moved somewhere else because, well, it's because it's, it's in the way. Sure, I can find a better place to keep these than outside where they get rusty, which not really great design because they're meant to go outside, right? So probably shouldn't be getting rusty to begin with, right? Okay. I got into go mode and then realized I should be keeping things updated since I'm working on a project. I grabbed the potting bench, scooted it over here. It's not where it's staying. Just clearing a path. This is all, that's for another video. I was going to put the arbs down here against this wall and put the apples in front of them, but I think it makes sense to go ahead and just put them back where they need to go. Right? Yes? I think that's probably the way to do things. And I noticed that it doesn't look like this hibiscus wants to come back, though I think I see some stuff down in there. Should have done this in the fall. That's the best time to cut back your hibiscus because that way you have more of an open crown for them to grow out of. It's hard to get in there and get everything moved out, cut out from the middle when there's new growth coming up on the inside. It is what it is. It's fine. Better late than never, right? Much better. I'm not... I'm not dealing with that right now. I don't want to. I have to dig the whole thing up anyways. It's fine like that. Get to it when I can get to it. Now the rest of the arbs, the apples, and then I think I'm just gonna take all the plants that are meant to go over there into this area, and that should get this space fairly well cleared out. I might need to move some things around, but that, that's fine. That's what I've been doing this whole time, right? Just moving things around. Yeah, this is more rain than I would prefer for working outside, but it's okay, getting things done. How do the arbs look? I know you can't really see them with the windmill palm in the way, and they're crooked. I haven't planted them yet. That's the umbrella just 
gushing stuff down, making noise. But everything moved over here, so it's all together. Just need to, well, the apples are gonna go up there. When it's time, of course, and I don't think those are three feet apart. I think one's like four. They need to be respaced, but they're up there. I'll worry about getting them laid out properly when it's time to plant them. Now I'm moving annuals over here onto this bench, and I'm going to start placing plants to be planted, which I won't be able to do until next week, so that won't be in this video because it just, it's looking like it's going to keep raining for a few days. But at least this way things will be less messy and congested and it will open up this space for me to start moving house plants outside, which I won't be doing in this video because rain, right? Still getting some things done. I think this is the last thing I want to wrap up is getting some things placed for planting and then we can talk about the Fort McNair chestnut and that'll probably be... It. I still, oh, there's so many things to move around. Making a lot of progress though. Nice to get some things done. And really, I don't mind working in the rain. I think it's quite nice. It's refreshing, relaxing. I'm just happy to be outside. Mm hmm. Yep, this is better. It's not perfect, but that isn't what I was going for. Just wanted to get the stuff off the patio so I can get the patio cleaned up. Still a few things left to pick. Are you sad? I had to leave for like one hour to go get a haircut. I'm throwing a fit ever since I got home. Still things that need to be moved around, obviously, but this is much better. I need to get that extension cord put away. Didn't realize there was a live extension cord just sitting over here where I've been watering plants. That could have gone very badly. Yeah, this is good. Not perfect. Still some things left to get moved around and placed for planting, but progress. That should not steal. Look at what happened. This was not getting afternoon sun. It was over here tucked inside of a bunch of stuff, but that 93 degrees, which isn't that hot, but when it's been so cool, it just cooked the heck out of them. I'm not concerned about it. Just prune that stuff off. It'll all flush out and look fine sooner than later. There are, I think I have one, two, three, four of these deep rose sun impatients left to place. I have two up there, and the other one needs to go in that one, but I have to move that. So this pipe, I gotta move you. You have to go. Well, I can't really do that right now. I can't get dirty. I have plans. So this might be maybe close to where it's time to start wrapping stuff up. Ooh, hibiscus is opened up. Look at that. It looks so beautiful with the water droplets on it. Love that. Didn't used to like the yellow, but when it has that nice pink center in it, I'm not hating it. The pineapple lilies. I have those over here. Those are ready to go in the ground. Not seeing any dripping from the new line that I put in here, so... Oh, that was something that got cut because I started refilming the video. Look at this. See that? You know what that is? You see it? Look at the variegation on there. It's one of those Stuttgart cannas. Was not expecting that to survive the winter. I did not mulch or anything over here, and I didn't even plant those very deep. I just kind of tossed them in the ground. I'm really happy to see that. The spot over here gets very cold. Like, really, really cold. And then the... I don't even want to talk about these anymore. I do still have all of this <laughs> to handle. I th Okay, I have some extra pansies that I didn't plant. There's not really a point in planting them at this point because it's going to get to a, a place here where it's going to be too warm and they're going to just fizzle out as soon as I plant them. So maybe I'll just find a nice spot to set the flats and enjoy them for a couple more weeks. It was spring. I was really feeling the plant chopping. It happened. It wasn't intentional. I really thought that I would fit all those into these containers over here, but hey, it is what it is. Bananas are, you could say, hardening off. Really, that's just bleaching. With the bananas, yeah, okay, some of the foliage got fried. The new growth is going to come out totally fine. At least <laughs> that's what I have to tell myself. Hopefully it'll come out totally fine. Ugh, everything out here is all wet and disgusting. I haven't had good rain in a while, so I'm happy about the rain. Help wash the pollen out of the air, but it's supposed to stay this way for several more days, so not likely to do any planting until that passes. There's a lot of clay up there that has to be worked and amended. I don't like digging into clay because you end up compacting the ground, which uh, this is also fine because I don't want to plant those this weekend anyways. Now I'll get a few more things moved around over here and can move the house plants out. Well, some of them. I think the, what, the variegated hibiscus, that will go over here and, uh... Is that it? I think that's it. No, it's not it. There are like heliconias and other random things they'll be filling in the gaps with. And then when the palm trees get here, get the rest of these things planted up and put to use where they need to go. I would like to find a special spot for the busy. The past couple years that I've 
had this plant, I've just sort of been sticking it in random corners, and uh, I feel like I could just, I could do better. It's a nice plant, it deserves a good spot, just need to find that right spot. And hopefully once the palm trees are here and things are moved around and taken care of, it'll click in my head as to where that should go. Isn't it beautiful? Fort McNair chestnut. I'll pull the tag over here so you can get a better look at it in case you don't know what I'm saying. Fort McNair chestnut, horse chestnut. It's a buckeye, a hybridized buckeye and a great price. Look at how big this thing is. And the root ball's tiny, which is fine. Easier to plant it that way. This is in the container. It's probably seven, seven and a half feet tall, something like that. That's just a guess. I'm just under six feet. Wow, it's sunny very sunny and it's up there with the container okay so maybe just over six feet tall beautiful tree so these are a hybrid between one of the missouri natives does it say on here like could i just read you the tag it would come across much more eloquently if i just read what somebody else says about it probably well i can at least give you the specs zone five through nine 25 to 35 feet high and wide these have a really nice shape think of a buckeye if you've ever seen a buckeye tree before they come up and just have that nice round domed top to them the foliage they have the hands like a cheflura it's one of the reasons i like them because i feel like these have a very tropical look to them especially off the flowers and the flowers are starting to fizzle out which is appropriate it's the time of year when they would start to do that this one still has some freshness on the top take a look at that isn't that just beautiful and this is still small when this tree's bigger those will be slightly larger the flower heads on these don't get huge few inches long but they're so colorful and they last for a few weeks it's not something you see around all that often it's a standout plant one of those plants where you go hey what is that deciduous tree and it's supposed to be pretty sturdy as far as disease resistance disease resistance goes there's a fumble on that moderate growers not going to get huge anytime soon so this is a plant I've wanted for a long, long, long time, and I just assumed I would never find them for sale. And then Sugar Creek posted on their Instagram that they had a couple of them. That's what drove me out there, was to have a look at them. And I poked around. They have a few. Of the Monrovia ones, I think they only have one more. Then that looked like there were some others that were slightly larger and more expensive. It's an awesome plant. Imagine this, when it's like double, triple this size, lots of branches on it, and all of these long, pendulous, upright flower bracts coming off of them. It's not really a bract, flower stalks grows coming off the ends of all of the branches. I'll have this over here. See this opening over there? That's where that's going. I know you're probably thinking where you can stick another tree. Right there. There's a gap over there. I can fit a tree over there. Probably going to have to keep it pruned over the years, but that's okay. Because it's a moderate grower, and the more you prune it, the more it's going to branch out, the more it branches out, the more flowers it's going to have on it. And it's a hybrid. It's a... I mentioned that, right? Pretty sure I did. Hybrid between the Aeschylus pavia and uh, some sort of European variety. I don't remember which, but whatever it is... It has made a beautiful plant. The leaves, a nice green. They have a slight shimmer to them. They are slightly bent inwards. And uh, again, these flowers, the coral pink with the orange throats. I wish that they were in more of a prime condition to show them to you. How's that? Can you see it? I can't see. The sun's in my eyes. Is it beautiful? Well, here, I already know that these are down lower. Why not try and get in on those? Beautiful. Those do get bigger over time as the tree gets bigger and the pollinators are supposed to love them. The butterflies and hummingbirds will be very appreciative of this. One of the reasons I really like buckeyes is because they tend to flush out a lot sooner than a lot of the other deciduous trees do. I have a red buckeye up on my hill that I've had for many years. Got it when it was a little twig. It could use some shaping and some TLC. But now that it's going to be getting more sun now, so hopefully it's going to get a nice shape to it. It's just one of my favorite trees. As far as the deciduous trees go, one of my all-time favorites, and I am so happy to have this one. It's going to look so beautiful as that grows and fills in this area over here. It'll look like a bigger area when I get some things moved around. There's a big open space over there for this tree. I should probably plant an evergreen because I'm always talking about wanting privacy, but I, you know, it's, here we are. It's fine. All those little bits of hair. It's something that drives me nuts when you get your hair cut. You're just like covered in like tiny little itchy pieces of hair. I need to rinse off. And that's 
basically it. It's a really cool looking tree. Definitely a strong tropical vibe to it. Beautiful, gorgeous plant. The new growth, look at the new growth, how it comes out all tiny and cute. Look at that. It's so little. On nice green stems, the new growth starts out green and then ages into its normal woodiness that you have there. And here, look at that. You can see the length, like how much growth these put out in the springtime. It's pretty impressive. I love it. I'm so happy about this tree. Oh, it's so pretty. And it's kind of scraggly because it's in a tiny little pot. It'll look better over time. But even as a scraggly little scrub of a shrub that it is, it's looking pretty good. And it's just exciting planting trees, isn't it? I think it's so much fun planting trees because it's such a long-term thing. Not like with the skip laurels. <sighs> okay, we can talk about that real quick. I just can't go down there because they're humans in my neighbor's yard and I'd be filming them while I'm down there. That hedge. I mentioned that I found some really nice, big, beautiful, gorgeous plants. They're bigger than the ones that are there by probably a few feet. And I want to get them, but at the same time... These winters aren't that uncommon. The negative six and the negative temperatures that we all experienced in the U.S. back in December, that was unusual for it to have such a dramatic drop and stay cold for as long as it did. But it's probably going to happen again. So I'm just wondering if it would be dumb to replant another laurel hedge because clearly they did not like that sharp decline in temperature. The only alternative as far as an evergreen hedge that grows quickly and I don't have to wear out windburn with over there are arbs. And they, those aren't even going to grow quickly over there. It's very shady. They likely won't grow very quickly at all. But they'd be long lasting. Like, I think these arbs over here, I think they're beautiful because they're against a fence and they're just doing what arbs are supposed to do. But in my head, I feel like... I won't be that happy with them on the berm. It's one of those things where it's like, I'll take it, partially just for the peace of mind of not having to worry about whatever hedge I have planted over there anymore. But the laurels are just so pretty. And there's always frost cloth, right? I can say that much for sure. If I decide to go with new laurels to replant that hedge with, I will be investing heavily in frost cloth for them as well, in case we have another spell like that and probably double up the cloth bags that go on top of them to help protect them and that might do the trick i'm not sure i would say it's cheaper to go with the arbs but i would need more of them than i would with the skip laurel so i don't really actually think it would be cheaper wow well, just something i'm thinking about give me your input comment down below let me know what y'all are thinking about that because yeah i would really like to oh oh that orange cast is that what i was filming in earlier it is. That's that's what I looked like earlier. Cool. Uh, Y'all, let me know what you think. Again, comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Sorry the video's not long. I know y'all like the long videos, but with the noise and the weather, it just wasn't happening. And it's partially just because I have a busy weekend. I'm being somewhat selfish as far as timing is concerned. I don't want to spend a lot of time editing because I have a bunch of stuff going on. Good stuff. Sit in front of the computer for eight hours to edit an hour-long video. Man, I don't want to do that this weekend. And assuming the weather clears up got lots of stuff to put in the ground. I grabbed some more nanooks to fill in this gap over here. I have several alpinias that are new that y'all haven't seen. They're ready to go up. I have, I think, everything ready for the Miami planters down there. I think I do. I mean, I have some things I'm toying around with that I would like to put in there. All the pineapple lilies have some bananas ready to go. Got a lot of planting to do next week and should be able to get the plants out of the garage too. Hopefully. I would like to. Just been moving things around because some of them have to go into the shade and there's not a lot of shade yet. In a month there's going to be too much shade. I'll be complaining about there not being enough sun out here, but right now, not so much. So there's only a small area where I can stick things to transition them. But I would like to get them out because I'm tired of going back and forth taking care of everything. And I would like to get the stuff planted up. The sooner you get them planted, the sooner they get growing. Yeah, that looks like crap too. <laughs> it just got so hot so fast. Again, it'll be okay. They're fine. They're going to flush out with new growth. In fact, this leaf opened up just like two or three days ago, and it's looking much better than the others. <laughs> Good thing it's a fast grower, right? All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great... Oh, I forgot. I was supposed to talk about the the number threes for the clematis. It just it needs frequent pruning, it being a prune type three. I think like February, March, and then maybe again midsummer, and then maybe in the fall. That's my understanding. I don't grow a ton of clematis haven't grown a ton of clematis so that's i think that's what it is i'd google it just to be safe but i'm pretty sure that's how that goes as i was saying hope everybody's doing well having a great day and a great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you and of course 
as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.